Welcome back to the show. It is Wolf and Luke. Wolf is in Minnesota, but he's on the line right now here for the final half of the show. And Wolf, before we get started with anything, I have to ask you if you have obtained a hat for the rest of the practice tomorrow. <laughs> Paul Kelvisi, I, I seriously, I got to kick Paul in the cradle. I mean, you knock it off, Paulie. Yeah, what a Twitter cowboy this guy truly is. Can you say that anymore? An ex cowboy that this guy is right now. Just incredible. Oh, listen, I that's right. I forgot to pack a hat. <laughs> I forgot to pack a hat, and there I was. Oh, my goodness, you got to be kidding me. I hope the warrior queen is not listening right now because there was no place around here to get a hat. No place around here except, of course, for the team shop <laughs> that was here. Now, I thought maybe, you know what, come on. This is an NFL franchise. Maybe I'd be able to walk in there and actually buy, a, I don't know, a Cardinals hat since it's an NFL shop? No, it was just Minnesota Vikings. That's all it was right there. And I, I bought this bucket hat that had a very small Minnesota Viking logo on the front of it and an NFL logo on the back. It was a white hat, okay? So I was like, okay, I'm going to get that. That'll be great right there. I bought it, and then suddenly Schwim, the, the equipment guy for the Arizona Cardinals, said, whoa, why didn't you ask me for a hat? I was like, I didn't want to bother you. Are you kidding me? You've got bigger fish to fry. I didn't want to bother you. He gets me a hat. So now all of a sudden I, I see a Minnesota Viking fan that I, I happen to meet. He's standing there, and I've got this brand new hat that I have not even put on my head. I have not even put on it because I was going to cover it with white tape, cover up the logo, and wear the hat. Nobody would have known it was a Minnesota Viking hat. And yet, Schwim got me this hat, the equipment guy for the Cardinals, so I gave it to this Minnesota Viking fan, and he was like, dude, really? <laughs> and I was like, no, I haven't even put on my head. Here, here it is right here. So that was 50 bucks Whoa. down the drain right there. So once again, Warrior Queen, please, we'll have this conversation later. Well, but that th was, this was, it was brutal out there today. The oh. heat index was 107. Thanks to Paul Calvisi, everybody can watch this right now on his Twitter feed. I'm watching it right now. What did he tweet out? Because I have not seen it. He, he tweeted out the video of you. You've got a Vikings hat. It's like it's a bucket hat, and it's you <laughs> putting tape over the Vikings logo, and you can still see the horns kind of sticking out. But but even in the video, you flip it around, you're like, see, there's an NFL logo on the back. I'll just wear it that way. But it's, it's just great because you're surrounded by Cardinals people in right. the rest of the video. Yes. It was just brutal, man. So, moral of the story, don't forget a hat base on needs when you're getting ready to go out in a joint practice. Or, second moral to the story, confiscate Calvisi's phone if you did forget your hat. One of the two. Right. I shouldn't have let Paul do that. I had no idea he was twit. Well, yeah, I did. He should tell me he was going to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. On to what you saw on the field today. You got to see your first joint practice of, of this uh, camp with this regime and everything. Is it Was it everything you were hoping it would be? Yeah, and minus the fighting, of course. There was no <laughs> fighting that was going on out there. Can I just tell you right now, I think both offenses had a rough day. Um, I really focused an awful lot of attention on the Arizona Cardinals offense. That was by design, based on onions. I wanted to do that in the first day of practice. I wanted to focus more on the offense. And then tomorrow, of course, go out and focus a lot of my attention on the defense. It's interesting, though, because the fields were side by side, and they're going to both both the, in the same direction. Of course, they were parallel, Basinonians. They were parallel to each other. And um, on one end, you had these bleachers where all these people were. So it was a public, very public practice. And on the other end, of course, you just had more fields. But this huge facility is very, very impressive for the Minnesota Vikings right here. And watching these, these practices, you could watch both fields very closely I had end zone shots and I was standing in the middle watching the defense and then watching the offense but I was more focused on the offense obviously but it seemed 
that both offenses struggled. Now, I will tell you, because I focus more attention on the Arizona Cardinals offense, they seem to struggle more to me than anything else. Yes, the defense, again, over over or superseded my my expectation and over delivered they did a nice job against the minnesota vikings but that really has kind of been the story i think so far of training camp in the preseason the fact that the defense once again for the cardinals over delivered and the offense has got work i will say this right here as i was out there luke watching these two practices you know on two different fields of course same practice but two different fields and watching the offense struggle it reminded me that that's typically the way it is in the beginning of training camp it really is now i know that we're headed into week number three of the preseason but the defense still is typically ahead of the offense especially when you bring the pads into the equation they're typically way ahead of the offense and I think maybe that's what I saw today are you uh did did you get to see anything from Zayvon Collins we were talking about him earlier when Zoe was in here and and just of you know the learning curve that he has at a new position did he stand out at all or who you're talking about the defense who stood out yeah, you know, their secondary, they were making a lot of plays. Keytrell Clark uh, made some plays right there. Um, saw Jalen Thompson make a play as well, bat the ball down. Zaven Collins, I saw him only in the one-on-one individual periods, and he jumped off sides <laughs> coming off the edge. And then he got stuffed, and Zavid would tell you that himself, (laughs) right? I think he was a little defeated because he jumped off sides, of course. But it was interesting because J.G. got up before the practice, and he was talking about the fact, I asked him the question, if there were going to be individual periods in which the, the teams would orchestrate joint practices in other words the offensive line when they go individual would there be one-on-one against the minnesota vikings and jg said there wasn't going to be that now maybe individual to him basinonians means something different than what it means to me the individual period maybe it means something different so i want to give him a little leeway on that one right there but they did they went one-on-one the offensive line worked against the defensive line the offensive line for the Minnesota Vikings, they although they didn't do it simultaneously, which was very interesting to me, but the offensive line for the Minnesota Vikings also worked against the pass rush of the Arizona Cardinals, and then you had linebacker pickup as well, which really surprised me. Based on you, you don't see blitz pickup anymore, but it was it was a a very specialized and specific blitz pickup. And when I talk about blitz pickup, I'm talking about running backs working against outside linebackers and inside linebackers as if they were blitzing. So they come from the edge, they come from the middle, and you as a running back have got to go ahead and put it on them. It's excellent work. What they do nowadays which they didn't do back when I was playing Luke, but what they do nowadays is they shorten the distance between the outside linebacker and the running back and where the running back is going to be. That was not the case back when I was playing. They shorten it considerably down to about three or four yards. That's all you give the outside guy when the outside guy used to have eight. (laughs) That's a huge difference. So they, they have done that, and there's no bull rushes allowed. Nope. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't run over the guy and bull rush him, now I'm just waiting on you to go ahead and move either either to my left or to my right. So whose advantage is it? That's the advantage of the running back. But in a game, guess what? The bull rush is there, and that's always the base that every great pass rusher works off of. Because otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and and try to move laterally either way because I know you're not going to run over me. You don't have a good bull rush. So you can see they've, they've made it so much easier on the running backs than they used to. But 
Um, a good practice overall, good work being done, but there's no doubt about it, the defense had the advantage today on both sides. Mm. And like you said, that's that's kind of been the way so far for the Cardinals, which I don't I don't hate. I mean, the Cardinals, the offense doesn't have Kyler Murray out there, and, and as you explained right there, a lot of times the offense is a little bit behind uh, throughout camp anyway. Right. 